I'm gonna walk you guys through each and every different ingredient as I go. Yeah, scramble eggs in the middle, uh, but noodle, noodle first, first bite. Da da da. How we chong sang? Okay, good afternoon, people. Okay, I'm just gonna go straight into it, okay? We're here at Hot Hideout, okay? This is their latest outlet, okay? Today we are doing mala. A lot of you guys been requesting for mala. Why I chose Hot Hideout, okay? You guys remember I got one video at NTU. For those OG viewers, you guys will know, okay? I did one video at NTU. I went there, eat everything at NTU. Back then at NTU, ah. They only got one outlet at NTU. Uh. Now they got like, so they got four outlets now. Uh. Going to become seven outlets soon. Already. Why I chose Hot Hideout? Another reason. A lot of people say it is like the best mala in Singapore. Maybe because they are tailored to the Singaporean taste. So uh, we're going to hate him first. Uh. I know the boss. <laughs> Met him at somebody else's wedding. We're going to go in, talk to him a little bit. Find out what is his idea behind Hot Hideout. Okay, so I'm with the owner, Ray. A very, very handsome, very young owner. How are you? 24. Turning 25, turning 25. It's awesome. uh, <laughs> I met him at Jet's wedding. Okay, you guys know Jet, uh, Jet Barbecue, the one who does all the ribs and everything. I only know that he's the owner. I didn't even know he's 24. Oh my god, it's very young. Okay, but anyways, tell me a bit more about your story. Why you start Hot Night Out? I know it started for NTU. How it got started? What's your inspiration between this whole venture? So, I think when we were in NTU, right, I was a year two student. I think Mala was really very, very popular. Yes, it is, it is. And there were like, I think 13 or 14 Mala stores in NTU alone. Oh yeah, I remember, right? So many mala stores, yeah. So we were like, what, what can we sell in school, right? And we eat mala every day, right? Okay. Uh, and, and me and my friends, we always go out to our different halls, try all different mala. We thought to ourselves, why can't we just make our own mala? We tried to figure out how to make a mala. We built many times, we cooked in the pantry, and eventually we opened a restaurant in NTU. Alright. So that was the very first outlet. I think in year three, we opened our second outlet. So second outlet is in Sembawang. And then now we have Bai Leba, and now you know, this is our very fourth outlet. Very it's fourth. just Bukit And apparently all the outlets are doing incredibly well. I looked them up on Google Review first. Uh. Wait, this one uh, just opened a uh, 4.7 star. Tell us a bit more about your mala. What's the difference? You guys put Singaporean kind of mala. Okay, I think it's three main things, right? right. Number one, traditionally mala, it's very oily. You know, if you order mala tongue, you can't drink the soup. Yes. It's very oily, yes. it's salty, and it's not healthy. Right? All right, all right. Ours, we use like a collagen soup base. Right. So it's very drinkable. Number two, for some ingredients, we actually deep fry them. So like our potatoes, our lotus, our luncheon meat, all these are all deep fried. Right. So it provides a different texture. It's like crispy, crispy, and you can eat your mala together with it. Interesting. Right? And number three is uh, for your eggs, we actually scramble them. Yeah. So it's, it's very like youngster vibe. So there's the three main differences, and we call ourselves the Singaporean kind of mala, mainly because we're not trying to be the traditional kind of mala. We're not trying to tell people we are the most authentic. In fact, we're trying to tell people we are the Singaporean kind of mala. He mentioned exactly why is it so different. We're gonna go and pick our ingredients and we'll see you guys in a bit. Now let's go. I need at least you go of nigga. So typically how you order is you get one of these bowls, they just pick whatever you want. Hot hideout here, right? They got a few variations. We're gonna separate, but I think I'm gonna put everything onto that giant bowl. So what do I like to pick uh, for my mala hot pot? I have three things that I always need, uh, okay? Bamboo shoots, right? Got a lot of very nice texture. When you bite down, and then it's got a lot of the a lot of moisture in there. So when you bite down, it's very, very nice. Okay, second thing, this is Yuma Itai. This is the goated ingredient when it comes to mala hot pot. The spice and everything, it, it can latch onto this. This one, very very nice. I'm just wondering how much I'm gonna spend on this mala hot pot order. Well, now I should put a cap. Sorry guys, later you'll top out and you'll top out. Another ingredient that people like to pick is this one, konjac. This one right, you guys can pick when you guys are low in calories. This one got little to no calories. The dory fish right, they have the fried option, okay, for the dory fish. So I'm gonna load up on the dory fish because I love their fried fish. I had their fried fish before, very nice. So they got the potatoes and they're gonna chop it up and they're gonna deep fry the thing. You guys can see a uh, very neat tidy and very, very clean, uh, this entire place. I'm not paid to say this, uh, but I can tell you guys, uh, this place is one of the cleanest mala I've seen. Okay, mala usually don't offer manto, but I'm a fan of manto. So I'm gonna get some manto for the fried stuff. Not enough, more. So we're done picking all our ingredients already, okay? It's right here. Got five big bowls. Okay, this will all go into the black bowl, uh, okay? I think it's gonna fill out the black bowl, but I specifically uh, told the staff that if it's not enough, to fill up, okay? Can add more stuff. Oh, here it comes. Biggest bowl of mala, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Okay guys, 
this is a crazy bowl of mala. Why there's so much steam here? Because I got some collagen broth on the side. This one is not the inside got soup one. Uh. This is the dry, uh, the xiang chao, the gan chao one. Uh. About over 8 kg of mala right here. There's like tofu, there's like fried fish, there's, there's mantou. There's a bunch of stuff in there, okay? It smells very good. It smells incredible. Okay, I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna walk you guys through each and every different ingredient as I go. There's scramble eggs in the middle, uh, right here. They are, they are signature, uh, okay? But noodle, noodle first, first bite. Let's go. I never appreciate instant noodle, but this one, they really cook it perfect. The texture is just nice. Oh, those scrambled eggs are so good, no? so comforting. Creamy scrambled eggs that they cook, that you can add, la, okay? So one serving of their scrambled eggs, just now I scored $1.50. I, I don't know how much this boy is. Later, we'll find out later. And now, bite. Today, we're sort of racing against time. Uh. Producer X only need to rush to his gig. Then today, got Jay Chow concert. Uh. Then he needs to brave through the jam. So I need to try and finish this within 40 minutes. I really like the fried addition. All the fried stuff on it. It gives it so much different texture though. So this dish, right, the texture is not going to be like flat. A lot, a lot of different texture. This is the dory fish, fried dory fish. It takes a lot of skill uh, to do this. This is uh, a mixture of lotus root and potato. Very, very good. The potato is like potato chips, right? Lotus root, yes, also like, like chips. They sort of like slice it super thinly before they fry it. Gives it so much texture though. Now I know people are, why, why people are hooked on to this. <laughs> I learned a lot of this as well. This is one of my favorite toppings uh, when it comes to mala, which is the cheese tofu. I just like it. It's just like a typical comfort food. And then, uh, some of the pork belly as well. This is also my favorite topping uh, when it comes to mala hopper. It gives it the porky, you know, flavor on top of all the noodles. I like it. For hot hideout, right, they definitely took the spice a little bit to accustom to the local palate. This one, the spice, right, is a bit more gentle. The numbness, right, is not the, the kind that will hit you, right, and then you will not taste anything. The numbness is very subtle, but you can actually adjust, uh, just now I see from the, you know, when you order, you can actually adjust. This is perfect for me. Just now I was at YouTube sharing some of my YouTube journey for the new aspiring creators. Someone asked me though, very interesting question. Since you guys are live, right, I'm just gonna say it. Someone asked me if I spit my food when I'm eating. So meaning you take a bite and you spit it. How am I gonna spit it here? Hey, my brother over there, brother. How am I gonna spit it here? Watching live, watching live. Oh, watching live. <laughs> you can watch it here. <laughs> Yeah, so, so the reason why I'm always on the live stream right, also proves the legitimacy of every single shoot. I really like their special seasoning. Very addictive. It's like uh, when you eat shao kao, right, they put on top. Like yeah, xinjiang and you know, like uh, cumin, turmeric, a bunch of like spices in it. Uh. Guys, you see my noodles, right? When I pick out noodles, it looks like just noodles, right? But inside, right, there's a lot of seaweed, bean sprouts, and all that kind of stuff. I purposely added all those, right, to add extra crunch to it. So if you bite down, right, the texture is very short. And the other thing I realized, right, they don't add the actual peppercorn. When you bite into it, it will, it will handicap you, it will stun you for a while. They just, they just use the peppercorn oil, which it sort of blends in very nicely. Though. But if you are the kind that you want like the Sichuan kind of spice, right, then this is not for you because the Sichuan kind of spice is the kind that will hit you in the face. Right? I don't know if you young people will appreciate this. Uh. One of my favorite toppings, uh, bamboo shoots. Not sure locals will like this, uh, but I personally huge fan of this. Lots of moisture, lots of crunch. In China, when you go to China, you eat mala, right? they tend to order a lot of this uh, 
black fungus intestine, which here don't have. Like I said, this is a different kind of mala. And I tell you guys something. Uh, I'm here about like six ish, six ish. Uh. Outside, uh, the queue is like non-stop one. Uh. It's insane queue. Uh. If you guys are really into the China kind of mala, the very bold, breezy, not exactly healthy kind of mala, this is not the kind of mala for you. I know I have friends that are like that because this one is catered to Singapore's palate. If you're someone from Chongqing or Sichuan or frequent there, right, and you come eat this mala, right, you'll find this very lack in comparison in terms of the spice level, in terms of the taste. I'm not talking about just the spice. I'm talking about the, the mixture of the, the blend of the spices. Yeah, it's very different as compared to the ones in Chongqing, Sichuan. It's interesting uh, that they actually give you deep fried mantou as an option. Uh, right? If you were to mix this into the regular mala, right, this might soak up a lot of the grease and the chili oil. Might not be that pleasant. But if you put it into this kind of mala, right, it works, it works. Because this one doesn't have much of the red oil residue, you know. This one works. I Sichuan is way too numbing for me. I prefer the, the this kind of a bit more mellow now. Eh. Suits my palate a little bit more. Sichuan is not the spice that hits you, it's the numbness. Eh. Once it hits you, you cannot taste anything else. But some people just like it. Eh. Had a very bad hiccup just now. It's starting to settle. We're just gonna fly through it. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> It's just my hiccups, it's really hindering me. Okay. So this one really cater to the local palate. Can come and try. A lot of very fun addition. Scramble egg, uh, all the fried stuff and all. I personally like this kind of mala a lot. Okay. But uh that's it, okay? That's it for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this last two bites. Okay, everybody, this is something like when experienced sports men try to practice their stance and Keep on falling down. This is somewhere that he's right now at. Uh, he know himself is not dangerous. The team know that it's not dangerous. But he need to push to his limit. Okay. I'm is... over. Let's go. Come on. Oh my god. Empty, yeah, empty. Okay. Fine, you go. Good. Okay, wait. At least to show.